welcome to Application, the Typo 3 Community Podcast. One, two. Welcome to Application, the Typo 3 Community Podcast. I'm Jeffrey A. McGuire. You can call me Jam. And this is where we celebrate the Typo 3 community, sharing your stories, talking about your projects and the difference you make in, around, and with Typo 3 CMS. In this episode of Application, the Typo 3 Community Podcast, I speak with Patrick Gaumont, who has been proudly flying the Typo 3 flag in far away, well, far away from me, Quebec City, Canada, since March 27, 2003. Patrick is the technical lead on Quebec.ca, the official government website of the French-speaking Canadian province. During the pandemic, that means Patrick is in charge of the website that is the source for official COVID-19 related information for the population of Quebec. And it's been getting a million or more hits a day with no downtime at all during the pandemic. This defines and encapsulates the term mission critical website for me. We talked about how and why he chose Typo3 in the early 2000s and why he's stayed with it all this time. He said he chose it because it meant he would never have to say no to a feature request from his boss, and he says it remains true to this day. Patrick was the driving force between Typo3 being adopted by the Quebecois government back in 2004 and 5, and Quebec runs more than 50 official web properties on Typo3 in 2021. And even though he says he's not very good at playing all the instruments surrounding him in his home studio office, he is the composer of our exceptional, quirky, fun theme music. Thank you, Maestro, for your musical contribution to the Type of 3 community. I hope you all enjoy listening to this episode as much as I enjoyed speaking with Patrick to make it. So, are you in Montreal? No, I'm in Quebec City. Quebec City. uh, Yes. It's about uh, two hours from Montreal by car. Uh Uh-huh. And uh, it's uh, almost 100%. French city. Oh, yes. So it's very different from Montreal for that. The Mon- Montreal is about almost 3 million people. If you take you know, Montreal as the, the whole uh, region, mm-hmm. and Quebec is about half a million people, but mostly uh, speaking French. Right. So, is, so um... I speak English about uh, one week a year. <laughs> I don't have to speak English at all. If if it was not for typo tree, I would not. Uh, well, there's that, and uh, also a, a musical camp. I go near New York, but that's the only time I speak in English. Huh. That's um. But I mean, life is nice that way, and there's a lot of there's a lot of a uh, lot of languages out there. So, um. And um. What's the what's the capital of Quebec? Quebec City. <laughs> uh-huh. Okay. That's what that's I was the thinking. Capital. And, uh, that's, and, and that's why the, the government, the, the, the main government uh, uh, buildings and uh, different organisms uh, are in Quebec City. And since I work for the government, it's only logical that I'm in Quebec City too. Sure, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you are a French-Canadian. And you have been doing Typo3 for a very long time. And one of the reasons that I wanted to talk with you is because I'm very interested in where Typo3 is outside of Europe right now. And I'm very, very interested in spreading the word to other places. And since you're such a strong proponent and such a a longtime community member, you know, I would. Uh, I'm. I'm really looking forward to talking with you about about your history in the project and what you do with it now, and um, a potentially little known outpost of the Typo Three worlds in French speaking Canada. How is it that you found Typo Three the first time, and when was that? Uh, it was uh, exactly uh, March 27, 2003, that I download Typo Three. What time was yes. it? Yes. Uh, <laughs> maybe around 10 i don't know <laughs> but but it's important because you know ty- type of tree changed my life it's as uh, simple as that i i had to do the uh, i was at the time i was working for the uh, business school at uh, laval university in quebec city and uh i was going crazy because 
the websites at that time were all made, you know, by hand. So each section of the website was a different color, different, you know, it, some students prefer green and some students prefer, or, so it, it was really a mess. And I had to, um, to do a, a new uh, image for the, 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 the website of the, the business school. So uh, I decided to look, I, I asked my boss, you know, give me two weeks so I can find a product to make our new website and using database. That, that was my main point was to use ah. database because uh-huh. I, I find, uh, you know, uh, files was a, a bit uh, awkward and, and a bit uh, passe. <laughs> so uh, what, I had my two weeks. Uh, I can't remember all the uh, the, the, the different uh, CMS I check at that time, uh, but Typo Tree was one of them. And I remember taking the decision to go with that product. And the reasoning uh, behind the decision was very simple. I didn't want to say no to my boss when he asked for a feature. Uh-huh. That was really uh, the, 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 the main reason I, I was protecting my own ass, if you want. <laughs> so 17 years later, and the decision uh, is still the right one for me. Um, so that's why I choose Typotry at that time. And I can tell you that in 2003, having a website, and we launched the new site, um, there was uh, 400 pages and two months later there was uh, I think a thousand pages all done by a single person wow and, uh, yes she, she, uh, I mean for, for the content of the website mm-hmm. uh, we were only two technical people for the, the old website at that time and the thing is that uh People call me and write email to me on the on the campus on the because at that time it was very very uh, 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 there was very uh, seldom website that were you know uh, constant visually constant you know from one uh-huh. page to the other right. at that time for the same reason I, we rebuilt it. Uh, from the ground up. So uh, I got call from colleague and people working in other faculty to ask, you know, how did you, what's the magical, what's the voodoo you did? So you have a website that is constant everywhere and it works and, you know, because you're in the student section, it's blue everywhere. You go to the uh, professor, teacher's, uh, section, it's green and stuff like that, and it was really something else at that time. And so I started doing demo over the campus, and people adopt typo tree in many places. Nice. So I, I'm almost doing you my uh, <laughs> how I get into typo tree <laughs> presentation. Keep going, keep going. So, uh, <laughs> Oh yeah, I can talk. You know, I I did training for a whole week, so uh, I can talk to Typo Tree about Typo Tree for a week, no problem. Nice. Uh, okay. You have to stop me. I'll uh, I'll, <laughs> but, I'll order a pizza at some point, but otherwise, you know. <laughs> so the thing I did also uh, was to um, I've heard of the uh, uh, Tree Board uh, conference at that time. Uh, knowing it was yes, but at, at that time it, it was really well. That's how I sold my participation uh, to get my plane ticket from uh, the union at the Laval University. Uh-huh. And, and it I, for me it was really you know yes, uh, snowboard and ski during the day, but computers, IT stuff, typo tree in the night. Yeah. So yeah, it's not your usual uh, conference at that it's time. A, but it's actually it's, a it's a brilliant format. And I mean, right now, <clears throat> none of us can really go anywhere and do anything. We are talking yeah. in, uh, you know, October of 2020. So 
whenever you're listening to this, we're talking in the middle of a pandemic and it's getting worse again and we're not really able to travel much. But um, it's funny, the idea of, of, of going to an interesting place with actual non-tech activities and combining that with 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 a tech conference is is actually I think it's I think um, especially because we care about the human relationships in open source so much I'm just I'm sort of surprised that more people didn't do that sort of a thing um, I do know there's a there's a there was a couple of Drupal events where they went surfing I think um, along the way but I also had the feeling that that was more of an excuse for a holiday so I don't know anyway worth thinking about if we can ever have events again. So, and it, it's also, you know, it, it's the first time I met Casper, uh, uh, and uh, it, it really, it, it makes me want to use and promote Typo Cree even more after that event. And uh, so it was really worth it. And uh, one of the things, I'm very proud of my city and my culture. So I invited Casper to Quebec City, and he did. In October uh, 2004, he went in Quebec City and he did a presentation. We did some kind of a special CMS day, and there was uh, people from the government in the audience. And that's the beginning of Typo Tree at uh, Quebec's government. Right. And it, it goes up to me working, still working with Typo Tree today because it, it was a huge success in uh, Quebec government. I mean, there's more than 50 websites done in Typo Tree uh, for the government of Quebec. So still today, that's why I'm still there. Yes. Nice. Is it, yes. the, um, is it the main CMS for the Quebec government? Well, I, I don't have current numbers. As for the you know, question about the Typo Tree in Canada, I, I really can't answer. I'm not... I think no one can really answer that. I know that, you know, uh, Canada.ca, I think it's made with uh, Drupal and uh, other stuff. But uh, sure, it, it, I, I, I think that in North America, Word, WordPress and Drupal are the main CMSs. Sure. And then you have stuff like, uh, you know, the, the, the one from uh, Adobe and... Um, and some others, but in Quebec, because it started early in 2005 for the government, it's still there. And when they had to, to make a decision for the, the new website, which is Quebec.ca, uh, they choose uh, Typo Tree and hired me. Nice. That, that was the beginning, and the end is right now it's, uh, you know, the, the, the main website for the, the government of Quebec is still in Typo Tree. In 2003, on um, March 27, what version of Typo 3 was it that you downloaded? Uh, the, the version was uh, 3.5 at 3. the moment. 3.5, yeah. Yeah. Now, I can't recall, was the official extension framework already there in 3.5? I think it was. Yeah, the... the the, the typo tree extension repository was uh, existing. There was also um, the tutorial Casper wrote was uh, the modern template building. And uh, also one of the reasons I think that I, I was able to choose typo tree at that time was that there was a, a website that refreshed itself every two hours or something like that, where you could you know, log into the back end, do some stuff, uh, try the, the the product. So at that time, it was helpful because you you didn't have to install it yourself to try it. Right, there was and, a demo uh, side up. Yep, that makes a difference. And you know, seeing all the um, I would say forward thinking of Casper into you know extensions, and uh, you can always change. Uh, uh, a default value that you don't like or you need to change. Uh, I, I see all that, you know, and for me, if you ask me, you didn't, uh, you know, can, can you, uh, can you talk about type of three with just one word? My answer is flexibility. The flexibility makes it very, very interesting for me uh, as 
you know, it's the same thing that I said earlier when I said uh, it's about saying not not saying no to my boss. I mean, if it's flexible enough, if you know, you all all the back end stuff you can do, you know, hide uh, fields that are not necessary, um, or if you know, you can have the uh, the HTML uh, editor change from for people doing news where you permit you just give permission for uh, italic and bold stuff like that and you can go you know full uh, editor for people with more skills or you know that that's a flexibility that you don't see in many products so uh, right now my, uh, the website i work for as more than uh, 175 editors wow and that's a they, lot they, they, they are in different, uh, you know, agencies and uh, uh, different uh, uh, government agencies. So everybody has different needs. Mm -hmm. And the flexibility, once again, uh, made it very easy to, to, to make sure that people can do their work. When you have new people coming to work on the site or work on one of your sites, and maybe they haven't worked in a typo three backend um, before. How do they? How 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 quick and easy is it to show them how to use the the interface? And and would you say people uh, enjoy using that backend on a, every day? Yeah, well, uh, I, I do. I, I used to do training, and it's usually uh, a day or less to do the the, the whole training. Um, in my past life. I did also, uh, usually editors, the maximum I ever did was two days mm -hmm. for the editors. And when I had to do two days, it was really uh, different people. I mean, you know, uh, having almost issues with the mouse <laughs> <laughs> Okay. to, to, to two developers. So uh, I had, you know, all, all kind of people, but uh, usually, it's really not the back end that is the, the, the main problem. The, the main problem of Typo Tree, from my point of view, is uh, workspace. Uh -huh. Workspaces, uh, it's a bit hard and it's a bit, uh, there. that's a place that Typo Tree needs more love. Now, there are people investing in that right now um, quite heavily and, um, and putting sort of full time developer resources. Uh, towards that. So I think it's going to get better. It's a place where flexibility is almost too much. I mean, you know, each PT content can be put in a workspace or not and stuff like that. So it's almost too much. People just want their page to publish. That's it. They don't want all the details. They don't. So it's a bit overcomplicated for most of the people. But that, that use case of having um, your live site and then being able to create different versions of, of, of content and get them approved or work on them before they go live is, is pretty important for, for governments, for example, or for anyone with uh, policies and auditing, um, auditing standards. You've got a room full of musical instruments there, don't you? What's your, what's your yeah. hobby? It's, it must be stamp collecting, right? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Um, I would say uh, e even if I got uh, many uh, guitars up there, I can show you uh, a few and uh, some wow. of my stuff. And <laughs> also, uh, but the thing is, I'm I'm not very good at any of these. Um, I just like to play. I just like to do my own music. I don't play music from uh, others, usually. Uh, and my latest hobby uh, is related. I'm doing um, pedals. Oh, are you, you know, you're building guitar, them? Guitar effects. Nice. So I, I'm, I made some, I don't... Um, and you made all yeah. of those? So, yes. The, the, wow. Uh, and and some are missing. I, I'm about 25 uh, or something right now. <laughs> nice. And which is your so that's favorite? My new hobby. Which is your favorite instrument? And which is your favorite pedal? Okay. Uh, favorite instrument is uh, the guitar. It's, uh, but which one? 
that one. That, that's my latest. Yeah. Uh -huh. Beautiful. Uh, it's a Bernie, and uh, what is special is it has a sustainer pickup. Mm -hmm. And uh, sustainer pickup is a, it, it's a, just a switch, and it it creates a electromagnetic field and resonate make the, the the string resonate. So I, I need there's a there's a battery mm -hmm. line volt battery there, so I I can you know. Do the, the just plug the, the the string and go take a beer and it'll just play. It'll be, it will be play still be playing. Nice. So and uh, for the pedal, well, uh, so many to choose from. Um, maybe, maybe. Well, uh, there's that one. Sorry, it was plugged. Um, this one is a, uh, it's a big muff. Yeah. But uh, Fripp, Fripp, Robert Fripp is uh, my favorite uh, living guitarist. So uh, it, it's the pedal he used in 1973. That's, that explained the name. Um, so I just had to do a clone of that pedal. And the other one would be uh, this one that I already showed it. Uh, right. It's a Sistec electronic uh, harmonizer. It, uh, it's an effect used by uh, Frank Zappa in the 70s. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very um, weird kind of pedal. And it's, nice. Yeah. I like I like Frank Zappa a lot. I'm not I'm not a like uh, hugely knowledgeable, but I've listened to a lot of his records. I also really like King Crimson. So. Um, there you go, right? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Boy, now I'm distracted. Hey, so officially, I don't have a theme song yet. Um, you want to you wanna, uh, do the theme song for the Type of 3 podcast? No problem. Uh, just tell me uh, how long you want it. Uh, do you want it uh, guitar-oriented, synth-oriented, uh, heavy, uh, smooth, uh, Okay, all right, I'll tell you. I'll, I've got the words, I've got a tempo, and um, I will tell you, and then, and then we'll, do a special, we'll do a special extra conversation about the, about the theme song if we get there. Awesome. No problem. See, no I problem. knew, I'm so glad I'm talking with you. <laughs> it's fantastic. So- Wow, and you know, for King Crimson, I, I'm, uh, I, do, I go to the King Crimson camp, uh, <sighs> In New York every summer. Wow! Uh, except that year, I, I've been there five times. I all, I, you know, uh, <laughs> I made my that's a uh, uh, ukulele uh, fretless bass, right? Bass with kind of weird, uh, strange uh, uh, strings, and it's. Um, it's powered. I mean, you can. Wow. And it's really huge. And it's signed by Adrian Ballou, Tony Levan, and Pat Mastoletto. Wow. You have some, you have some fun, crazy stuff there. <laughs> <laughs> so I yeah. think we were supposed to be talking about what was it? <laughs> <laughs> so. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, Back to Type Tree. <laughs> exactly. I know that you've, I know that you've um, said that you chose Typo 3 because you have never had to say no or you never wanted to say no to any feature request, right? And that it's really flexible. So I guess I guess I have a couple questions about that. What's the coolest or the most interesting thing you've ever built with it? Yeah, well, it, it's Quebec.ca. And uh, if you go there, it's, uh, it's the main uh, site for the government of Quebec. And uh, for the last two years, it it we launched it in uh, June uh, two thousand eighteen, um, and it's it's all um, um, the the infrastructure is all on uh, Amazon AWS, Amazon uh, Web Service, and uh, it's pretty solid. And and uh, the, the old setup. Uh, it's very, very uh, interesting. I mean, we, we got 
uh, Aurora database instead of MySQL, but it's, it's the same. Uh, we got CloudFront, and it, and we got with the, the the pandemic you talked about. We uh, we're now the center of the universe for the government about the the COVID nineteen. Oh, so, yeah, uh, <laughs> we get. Uh, very uh, important traffic on the website, so uh, all the infrastructure uh, had to keep up with the, the demand. Because you know, right now we're about you know almost a million page view every day. Ooh! So yeah, and yeah, wait, check the number. So every person in Quebec is clicking uh, on the website twice. It's more than that. Uh, <laughs> we, we you know we got. Eight million people in the whole province. Oh, okay. Yeah, and uh, and we got you know since March, we got about one hundred uh, one hundred twenty-five million page views. We had our record is um, a bit more than four million page view in a single day mm. in March. And we didn't add any problem. Um, it, it, it was really rock solid and uh, we can take even more because we, we use uh, all the uh, elastic facilities. You know, we uh, servers mm -hmm. are added once we reach 30% of CPU or 30% of uh, memory. We add server every mm -hmm. time we reach that point. And if the, the traffic goes down, we just kill the servers to keep them to the, the min minimum uh, right. viable. And Typo, typo 3 is handling all of that just fine too. Totally, and it's, uh, and we, you know, we, we can um, uh, put the, uh, excuse me, sometimes I have to think about English terms because I never use the terms in English. Uh, <laughs> so uh, every time we, we go in production, we, we put our code, code in production. Uh, we, we can do that, you know, in the middle of the day. Many, you, you know, the, the, m many people will be afraid to put code, new code in production on a Friday, but we do that every time and uh -huh. without my, my my desire would be to do it at four o'clock on a Friday. We didn't. I think two hour, two uh, two p.m. was our uh, maximum, but it's close enough for me. And um, we're, we're at you know more than one hundred and I think one hundred and twenty-eight um, production push. You know, we we did uh, get pushed to the old uh, website because. When we push in production, we uh, we recreate all the servers, all the uh, <clears throat> excuse me, all the servers, uh, Apache, uh, everything, all, all the, the code, everything is built from the ground up, uh -huh. install, and uh, the the new server are put behind the, the the active one. After one minute, without any error, we kill the uh, the, the, the current uh, working ones, and they are replaced with new one, and we we do that any time of the day, uh, no problem. Will nice. people still working? It's it's really totally transparent. We we don't have to ask permission to it. No doubt. There's no there's no downtime. There's no content freeze. There's none of that. There has been no downtime in the last six, uh, six months. And even more than that, but uh, I mean, since the the pandemic, uh, the the server are just working and doing their job. That's what we want in the end, and um, especially when you're yes. responsible, when you're responsible for 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 an essential public service, even more than usual. It's it's uh, it's good to know that uh, that that you got that sorted out, and it's gonna it's gonna be there for everybody. It's great. Mm -hmm. Yes. So without saying flexibility, what's your favorite feature of Typo3? I, I think um, the, the, the um, TC form, the, the, the fact that you can really, you know, tailor the backend for your editors 
is something very, very important because, you know, in the front end, everything is possible and you can always, you know, do some hackish JavaScript stuff uh, if, if there's something not working like you want. But the, mm. the back end is really where, you know, you have a direct uh, conversation with the people using it. So I think to... Uh, be able to tailor the uh, the the uh, the interface for the users which you know you can talk to them and you have to train them yeah so all of this for me it, it's really you know I, I know that I can get rid of all the annoyance except workspaces <laughs> 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 okay. We're back to that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in the great open source tradition, if you complain about it, you're going to have to go and fix it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, I, I and I'm totally, I'm, I'm the first guy that wants, you know, all uh, everything we develop, I would like it to be on tear, but uh, on the typo to extension repository. But on the other end, you know, I'm always in a rush and always uh, having pressure from uh, political. And um, so it, it's really, really hard, even just sharing our uh, templates, you know, yeah. simple, simple stuff is, uh, it, it's, it's really hard to, you know, uh, just get your, I don't know if the expression exists in English, uh, you know, just get your end out of the water. Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, to breathe, <laughs> so it, it, it's really challenging to. Uh, but but everything we uh, every time we think it it could be worth it, we try to do it. I mean, um, one of the extension we we did um, uh, we work on it. it uh, it's called. Um, I think it, oh, yeah, additional scheduler. Mm -hmm. So it's it's jobs for the the, the scheduler, and one of them is uh, the ability to uh, to do SQL queries, and you can have the result in an email. Mm -hmm. So and and it's pretty convenient because we didn't have time to have a, a backend module to uh, to get our uh, comments. You know the those are the uh, the footer of the pages where people can say, oh yeah, it was useful or not. And so we simply uh, send emails with the comments and the uh, the statistics uh, from them. But the, the extension uh, was very handy, but it has also uh, the problem that it was not doing files. So the export, if you, even if you have a, I don't know, 1,000 uh, lines was inside the email body. <laughs> so, so we did, uh, we did add the, the possibility to have a CSV file attached instead. Perfect, perfect. And also, and also the, the, every time you wanted to have a different uh, email title, it w you had to do a, a new, um, a fluid template so it's not very convenient so we end up with many emails with just you know additional scheduler email or something like that mm. as the as the title of the email so we did the modification to add the title uh, even the body text you can change uh, csv and we uh, just did uh, a pull request to the the uh, official author of the, uh, of the original extension, and he did uh, use it. We had a few uh, back and forth for the for the code or you know how to do things. And but in a week it was done, and it's it it's been there for uh, almost a year now. Perfect. And uh, and and that totally uh, in line with my philosophy to to share because you know uh the the uh, type of remoto is uh, i live by that 
I mean, mm. I've shared my knowledge, I've shared my passion for Taipo Tree for uh, more than 15 years, and I still continue. So, right. Uh, yeah. Inspiring people to share. Yes. So, I'm doing a thing on the podcast called the Suggest a Guest, and I would like you to tell me who I should, who you'd like to hear me uh, speaking with on another podcast. Yeah, well, my, my first idea would be to, to try to get uh, a Philip uh, Philip Piquete. Uh, Philip is the the he, he works for well he owns uh, Tomorrow, and Tomorrow is uh, one of the, the the main provider of uh, type of tree services in Quebec City. Mm -hmm. um, and he, he it's his his team that did the uh, initial. Uh, Amazon infrastructure for us because at that time, you know, when we start uh, Quebec.ca, we were only two technical people on the team. It, it's very small team for such a, a huge website, so we had uh, we needed help for the initial setup, and so he could talk, you know, all the the bits and bits for the 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 whole setup. Uh, on Amazon, and I know he, they have uh, other clients too, so that would be the, the first person I think of. Sounds like a great idea. Um, so, um, 17 years of Typo 3 since March 27, 2003. Congratulations. <laughs> um, that's, uh, but it's fantastic, and I think that, um, you know, um, the 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 fact that people gave us tools like this to use and then we can build our lives around them and help other people and you can help your entire province with the critical information it's a it's an amazing uh story of technology doing really good things in the world and i i really i really like being part of that sort of a being part of that sort of um activity and a movement and a and a philosophy a philosophy so thank you for all your contribution and all your enthusiasm. Um, hopefully we'll be able to meet in person sometime, but uh, certainly not gonna be anytime soon. Um, thanks for taking the time to talk with me. I will write you an email now, very short with, with my thoughts about the podcast theme song. And, um, and then, you know, maybe we can make that happen. That would be that would be really, really fun. A community theme song for a community podcast. That would be super cool. Uh, it will be my pleasure to participate. Uh, I like sharing. <laughs> I told you. Great. You. Okay. Fantastic. Patrick, thank you so much. My pleasure. All right. Take care. See you. Thanks to the Typo 3 Association for sponsoring this podcast. Thank you, B13 and Stephanie Kreutzer, for our logo. Merci beaucoup, Patrick Gaumont, Typo3 developer and musician extraordinaire, for our theme music. Thanks again to today's guest. If you like what you heard, don't forget to subscribe in the podcast app of your choice and share Application, the Typo3 community podcast, with your friends and colleagues. If you didn't like it, please share it with your enemies. Would you like to play along and suggest a guest for the podcast? Do you have questions or comments? Reach out to us on Twitter at Typo3Podcast. You can find show notes, links, and more information in our posts on Typo3.org. Remember, open source software would not be what it is without you. Thank you all for your contributions. Hello. Do you play the Do you play the sitar? I play uh, everything I can my and on on to. Uh, I wow. Got, uh, nice. Brothers.